What's up guys, welcome back to the poker vlog. This is episode number 51, and this is an awesome one. I play uh, some 2-5 at the Red Rock, then at the end I hang out with 2017 main event champ, Scott Blumstein, super cool dude, apparently is a fan of poker vlogs. Uh, we got in contact and he agreed to be uh, interviewed by me, which is super cool. Um, if you guys follow me on Instagram, you might have seen that I was at Hawkesson on Thursday. Not really a club guy, I'm just uh, way too lanky, and don't look very good uh, dancing. Yeah, you've got the body of Gumby and look like one of those flappy balloon dudes at the car dealership just flailing your arms around. Very funny. No, it's not a joke. Okay, anyway, um, yeah, so we were at the club. My girlfriend's friend has the hookups there. She knew somebody who was getting uh, pretty much the best bottle service possible. There were just tons of bottles of Dom Perignon and other really expensive stuff. Someone said that maybe there was 200k worth of alcohol there. I'm not really sure how they value that, but I think it was like 10 to 15 thousand dollars per bottle, which is awesome. Uh, the people who uh, purchased the table left, so we had it to ourselves, and then at the end we had a lot of leftover bottles. So I just passed them out to random strangers, which was cool. Um, but then uh, security said I had to stop doing that. Apparently I can't give it away. I usually uh, only go to the clubs maybe once every six months or once a year or something. Um, but that was by far the most fun I've ever had. All right, let's go ahead and get into the episode. I play some 2-5 at the Red Rock. This is my home court at Red Rock. When I first moved out to Vegas in 2012, I played here every day. I like it because it's a locals casino. Everyone's extremely friendly with each other, but it can be on the nitty side at times. The buy-in is 300 to 1,000. I'm in for the max. We start the game six-handed. After a few minutes of playing, I pick up Queen Jack offsuit on the button. The player under the gun limps in. I raise to 20. Small blind calls. The under the gun player also calls. We go three ways to the flop and it comes queen 5-5. Five, five. Both players check, I bet 30. I'm hoping to get called by any pocket pairs or maybe even some ace high hands or some backdoor draws. The small blind folds, the player under the gun makes the call. We're heads up, the turn's another five, we make a boat, the opponent checks, I'm not gonna check back a boat here, I bet 50. The player calls, the river's a king, this time the opponent leads out for 100. I've known this guy since I moved out to Vegas. He plays pretty tight, doesn't bluff very often. I don't beat much here. He has to have at least a queen, if not a king. At best, we're chopping. I don't take my time to process the situation fully and toss in calling chips. The opponent rolls over five, four of clubs. He flopped trips, made quads on the turn, then took me straight to Value Town on the river. I should have been able to get away from this hand at the end. Going into autopilot and not taking my time for certain decisions is one of my biggest problems that I need to fix. Next we get ace-queen offsuit in the cutoff. I open to 15. The small blind calls. We go heads up to the flop and it's ace-queen four with two spades. Small blind checks. We've got top two pair. No big deal. I bet 15. The small blind calls. The turn is the ten of spades. This might be the worst card in the deck but still plenty of hands that we beat and can get value out of. The small blind checks. I don't want to allow a fourth spade or a king or jack to come on the river without my opponent having to pay to see it. I bet 50. The small blind apparently can't beat much and lets his hand go. Here we have ace eight of diamonds in the big blind. The cutoff opens to 15. The small blind calls. I've got a hand that's too good to fold. Maybe it's okay to call for 10 more. I prefer to avoid seeing the flop altogether and 3-bet to 65. That gets the job done, both players fold, we win it. Now we pick up ace-king offsuit under the gun plus one. I raise to 15, a player in middle position calls, the button calls, and so does the big blind. We go four ways to the flop, comes 9-5-3 with two hearts. The big blind checks, no reason to try and bluff three other players. I check, and the opponents check behind. The turn is the king of diamonds, we've improved the top top, Big blind checks. I put out a half pot size bet of 30. This gets a call from everybody. I'm hoping that at least someone else has a king. The river is the six of diamonds, one of the best cards from my hand. If I was ahead on the turn, I should still be ahead. 
The big blind checks, I bet 110, hoping it'll be hard for anyone with a king to fold, but everyone tosses their cards in the middle, we take it down. In this hand, we have Queen Jack offsuit on the button, or perhaps better known as the Andrew Nimi. There are seven of us at the table now, a player in middle position opens to 15. The cutoff calls, again we're in a situation with a hand that's too good to fold and not quite good enough to call. We have blockers to some key holdings and we're in position, we go for a 3 bet. I raise to 65, the original preflop raiser folds. Now the cutoff, 4 bets to 220. He's leaving himself with 30, what in the hell is going on here? Well, this is one player who rarely 3 bets, even with extremely strong hands, I've played with him a lot over the years, he loves to trap, he can easily have me crushed. I'm caught with my hand in the cookie jar and have to lay it down. The opponent turns over pocket kings. We did not have blockers to that. Sometimes I three bet and it doesn't work out. Still happy with how I played it. A few people leave, so it's me and three other dudes who are all regs. We decide to get a game of pineapple going, just like Texas Hold'em, except you're dealt three cards pre-flop instead of two, and you discard one after the flop. I'm in the small blind with ace king three. My buddy Brian raises to 10 on the button. I call, the big blind also calls, the three of us see the flop, it's king jack jack, pretty good flop for us. I check and the other two players check back. I give up my three, the turn comes out and it's the eight of hearts, there are two hearts out there now. I want to get some value out of my hand and I'm not quite sure how much I can bet to get a call. These guys know that usually when I bet I have it, so I don't want to scare them off, I put out five. The big blind folds, the button calls. The river is the deuce of diamonds, I bet 15. My buddy makes the call, I turn over ace king, it's good. We take down what might be the largest pot of my pineapple career. I think I played it one other time and it was 2-4 limit. Some other people show up now, so we change it back to Texas Hold'em. I have ace jack suited under the gun plus one. My friend opens to 15 from under the gun. I call, the player in middle position calls, so does the big blind. The flop comes, jack 10, four, all diamonds. We've got top, top, pretty scary board though. Gets checked to me, I bet 25. The players all fold and we win. The next hand we have ace king offsuit under the gun. I open to 15, the button calls, the small blind calls. Big blind's getting a good price, he calls too. We go four ways to the flop. It's ace queen eight with two hearts. The blinds check, I bet 25, actions on the button. He puts in basically a min raise, he makes it 55, folds to me, I'm not sure where I'm at, I don't want to re-raise in case I'm crushed, I call for 30 more. The turn is the six of spades, I'm always going to check in this situation, luckily the button checks back, so I'm probably ahead and might just be up against a semi bluff. I'm going to go for value on the river as long as a heart doesn't, god damn it. The river is the five of hearts, not going to go for value here, I check. I'm happy that the button checks back. I turn over ace king and it's good. Interesting line by the button. He shows ace jack. He gets a showdown for basically the minimum. We're almost back to even and we get pocket sevens on the button. The player under the gun makes it 15. The player in middle position calls. I call. The big blind also calls. The four of us see the flop. It's 4-4-3 four, four, so we've got an over pair. Gets checked to us, this is a dynamic flop, we want to put out money right now to deny equity for anyone holding over cards. We bet 20, that's enough, everyone folds, and we're happy to win. Here we have pocket jacks under the gun plus one, a player under the gun limps in, I raise to 20. One person calls in middle position, the limper calls as well, the flop comes, jack eight deuce with two hearts, we've got what you call the stone cold nuts. Or if I just want to use one picture. The player under the gun checks. I have an aggressive player behind me. I check. The player in middle position bets 30. The under the gun player calls. No more messing around. I make it 115. Both opponents end up laying their hands down. We get all the chips in the middle, but perhaps I could have won more money without check raising. It's tough to know for sure. In general, it's probably better if I just bet myself initially. Now we have king queen offsuit in the big blind, it's a straddle pot, a player limps from middle position, the small blind calls, I don't want to reopen the action and raise, I just call the straddle or checks, so the four of us see the flop, and it comes ace king queen rainbow, we have bottom two pair, small blind checks, I bet 20. The limper in middle position calls, the other two players fold, so we're heads up, the turn is a six, I'm a little concerned that the opponent is slow playing a big hand, 
He was first in preflop, and a lot of times in straddles, people in this game who are first in will limp with monsters. This flop shouldn't have connected well with a normal limper's range, which would consist of small to medium pocket pairs and maybe suited connectors. I suppose that I could be up against a hand like ASAC suited or King Jack, Queen Jack, King 10, and Queen 10 type of hands. Jack 10 is a possibility though too. I check. Looking back, I don't necessarily like a check on the turn, but it's not completely terrible. The opponent checks back. Now I'm very confident that I'm ahead. All hands that are beating me should have bet there. The river comes out at the deuce. I bet 50, the opponent believes me, and he folds. We're in for a thousand. Now we battled back to get unstuck. We've got about 1240 in front of us. We get king 10 of spades in the cutoff. One player limps in from middle position. The player on my right limps in from the hijack. Raising in position with two suited Broadway cards is definitely the standard play. I don't like limping, especially when there's only one limper ahead of me. With two limpers, I don't mind it as much. And that's what I do, I toss in five. The button raises to 25, all of us limpers make the call. Four of us see the flop. It's queen seven four with two spades. We've got an overcard to go along with our flush draw. The first two opponents check. I check, the button bets 60. The hijack calls, I'm not gonna go anywhere. I call as well. Now we're down to three of us. The turn is the seven of clubs. No one likes that card very much. We all check. The river is the five of hearts. We have officially missed. The hijack checks, I check. The button bets 100. The hijack calls, easy fold for me. The button has ace queen offsuit for the win. In the last hand we'll go over, I have pocket tens in the hijack, I open to 15. The small blind calls, the big blind three bets to 75. Can't fold just yet, I call for 60 more. The small blind lets his hand go, we're heads up, the flop comes, 10-7-7, we've got a boat, and it's a big one, like an aircraft carrier. The big blind checks, really seems like we're up against ace king, my opponent would most likely bet all over pairs. I check back to give the big blind an opportunity to catch up. The turn is a jack. Now we've downgraded to maybe a large yacht or something like that. The big blind checks again. We've got to start trying to get value out of our hand. It still seems like we're up against ace king or ace queen. I bet 65 to try and get some value out of two over cards. The big blind folds. That was the last interesting one for the day. We made some big hands. Unfortunately, we weren't able to get paid off, but we did manage to book a win before racking up and heading to the cashier. Tip for the session, won $193. And uh, it's kind of interesting, got stuck 200 right away. Battled back, didn't get in any huge hands, but uh, happy to book a win, played for four and a half hours. Time to go home, hang out with Cosmo. That's it for this episode, hope you guys enjoyed it. If you did, please hit the like and subscribe buttons, it helps a lot. Uh, if you have any questions or comments, let me know in the comment section and I'll definitely get back to you. As I mentioned earlier, I hung out with Scott Blumstein. That was actually the day before I filmed uh, the session for this episode, and he was just awesome, man. Um, we I, we got in contact through Twitter. He's a fan of poker vlogs. Uh, he's thinking of possibly starting his own. We hung out at Yard House first, got some food there, and then we were going to do a 10-minute interview. It ended up being a 30-minute interview, and we got off to a great start. Here with 2017 main event champion Scott Bloomstein. Uh, Blumstein. Blum uh, Fuck. We're gonna redo no, this. Okay. Yeah. Here with 2017 main event champ Scott. What did I say? Blum Blumstein. 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 Yeah, I uh, messed up his name twice there. Pretty nervous. Don't do a lot of interviews, and it's not every day that you get to hang out with the main event champ. Uh, but he was he was super cool. Um, it was just supposed to be a 10 minute interview. We ended up talking for a half hour. I was just gonna put some of the clips in this section of the episode, but instead I'm deciding to release the entire video uh, by itself. So be on the lookout for that. That'll come out either today or tomorrow. And just the main thing I got from hanging out with him is that you shouldn't be fooled by the rocks he's got. He's still, he's still Scott from the block. You know, he used to have a little and now he's got a lot more. 
But um, no matter what, he knows where he came from, which is New Jersey. That's it for this episode, guys. Hope you're all doing well. Good luck at the tables, and I'll see you next time.